a local Facebook follower of mine gave me this dresser for free just because she wanted to see what I would do with it. Once I got it in my paint booth, I removed the hardware and the drawers so that I could strip the top without getting any stripper gunk on the base of my wood. To strip the top, I'm using clean strip, quick strip in the 15 minute formula. I apply a liberal amount of stripper to the area I need stripped, let it sit for about 15 minutes, and then come back and scrape it off with a plastic scraper. Sometimes this needs to be done more than once, but on this project I was able to get it done in just one pass. For the details around the edges, I just use a smaller plastic scraper and get off as much as I can. I'll come back later on with steel wool to get the rest of it off anyways. Once I've scraped off the majority of the stripper, I'll use mineral spirits and steel wool to scrub any remaining stripper residue off of my wood. This ensures that there's nothing left over for whenever I go to stain it or whatever I want to do with it later on. Once I had done the top, I decided I wanted to go ahead and strip the drawers too. I don't do this very often and it was a lot more time consuming because of all the curves and the details on the drawers, but I had an idea in my mind and I thought it would look better with the drawers matching the top. Just like on the top, once I've removed the majority of the stripper, I use mineral spirits to clean it all up. Even though I got the majority of the original finish off with stripper and steel wool and mineral spirits, there's still some left behind that needs to be taken care of with sandpaper. This final sanding step will take care of any remaining residue and any imperfections, giving you a nice clean slate with brand new raw wood that you can do whatever you want to it. With all of my stripping done, I can move on to prepping this piece to get it ready for paint. To get my surface nice and clean, I use some trisodium phosphate in a spray bottle. Just give it a little spray and wipe it down and it's clean and ready to go. Once everything is cleaned, I use my Surf Prep 3x4 detail sander and some fine sandpaper to give everything a light sanding. As I always say, I'm not trying to sand this down to the wood. I'm just trying to scuff up the original finish so that our paint has something to adhere to. Once I'm done sanding, I dust everything off and then give it a wipe down with a damp rag to make sure there's nothing left behind. On this piece, I decided to seal it with some clear lacquer just to make sure I didn't have any bleeds coming through the paint later on. Bleeds in this case would happen because I sanded the original finish and the wood stain and the wood that I exposed would interact with the water-based paint, causing stains to come up in the paint whenever it dries later on. You can use primer, shellac, lacquer, spray paint, anything that creates a barrier between the oil-based wood and the water-based paint that you're applying will have the same effect. Whenever I'm using this aerosol lacquer, I can apply two quick coats, waiting about 15 to 30 minutes in between each coat, and then it's ready to be painted over. To paint this piece, I use Fusion Mineral Paint. The color is Lichen. Personally, I'm accident prone and spill things easily, so I transferred this paint into this condiment dispenser that I got from the dollar store to keep me from spilling it and wasting any of it. This was my first time using Fusion Mineral Paint, so I don't have a lot of expertise on it or a lot of opinions on it, but I know I'm going to be asked. I do like the way that it covers. They do have a lot of nice color options. I am, however, very skeptical about any paint that says it has a built-in top coat. I did not top coat the paint on this project just so I could evaluate it for myself. As of the posting of this video, I haven't had any real issues with it. The finish without a top coat is very similar to chalk paint. It has a matte or eggshell type feel to it. If you wanted your piece to have a little bit more of a sheen, or you wanted to be a little bit extra cautious, it wouldn't hurt to add a few layers of top coat to this paint. I ended up only needing to use two coats to cover this piece, and I waited about 30 minutes in between each coat. This is what the paint looked like after one coat. Just another quick application of the second coat, and it was good to go.
Instead of using dark oil-based wood stains like I typically do, I decided I'd lighten this piece up with a whitewash. I created this whitewash by combining a 3 to 1 ratio of water to white paint, then I brushed it on and immediately wiped it off with a damp rag. This did actually take me a few times to get it down because I'd never done it before, but once I got it figured out, it was super easy to do. After I'd given the top and the drawers plenty of time to dry, I was ready to apply my top coat. This time I'm going to be applying water-based polyurethane with my toasty sponge. First I dip Toasty in some water to get him wet. Then I dip him in the water-based polyurethane and give him a little squeeze to get any excess out. When I'm applying polyurethane this way, I'm just applying it in very thin coats and taking a step back to make sure that I'm getting good coverage as I go along. Sometimes bubbles are left behind because of the texture of the sponge, but I find that I can just lightly go over the area again with the sponge before it dries and it'll clean up these bubbles and give me a smooth finish. I did two quick coats of this, allowing it to dry about 30 minutes in between each coat. Because I am applying this in thin coats, everything dries to the touch really fast, but it'll still need a few more days to fully cure. With everything dry, I put the handles back on in a nice organized fashion and this piece is complete. I tried some new products and techniques on this project and I'm happy on how it all turned out. Gotta get that thumbnail shot in. Let me know down in the comments what you think about this project. Make sure to give the video a like and if you haven't already, subscribe to my channel. I hope you guys enjoyed this shorter video. I'll see y'all again soon.